uh, so I titled it New Neuroinformatics at FUV, that is our uh, faculty of uh, physics, as, of course, we cannot cover all the neuroinform neuroinformatics field, as, uh, well, this is not possible with the uh, manpower that we have and with the background that we have. So first I will tell a few words of, uh, about our background. So uh, as a scientific activity, we are mainly involved in EEG signal processing, modeling of brain circuits, and BCI and assistive technologies. Uh, as far as signal processing uh, is related, we do uh, like standard event-related potentials analysis, time frequency analysis, uh, event-related synchronization and desynchronization, functional connectivity, and uh, recently uh, also cross-frequency coupling. Uh, as far as modeling uh, is concerned, we do populational uh, level models for epilepsy and, let's say, sleep spindles, and also uh, modeling of brain circuits on the compartmental uh, levels. And uh, in this respect, we have a uh, developed model for epilepsy, at least some uh, versions of this, because there, there is really many, many uh, different varieties of things uh, called epilepsy, and uh, SSVP, and also high gamma oscillations. As for the BCI and assistive technologies, uh, we worked on uh, the, the main three paradigms, which are SSVP, P300, and uh, ERDRS, that is uh, motor imagery. And with this background, uh, we view neuroinformatics as the application, of, uh, application to the neurosciences of methods for measurements, analysis, and modeling derived from the physical sciences, as we are physicists from the origin. And, um, now we can, well, okay. Uh, now for the neuro, neuroinformatics education. Uh, most often the scenario is, as it was already said, that people come from different fields like biology, psychology, mathematics, informatics, and physics, and they try to join this community at the level of PhD studies, usually and when they join some laboratories and they get involved in, in real studies. And uh, in our faculty, it began, as I told, with uh, modeling, some signal analysis. So this is a picture from, uh, let's say, more, more, a little bit more than 10 years ago. And uh, then in uh, 19, and, and 200, 2009, there was a program uh, from European Union called Human Capital Program, and we had some extra money to start uh, developing uh, the new curriculum. Uh, and uh, well, at that time, Piotr Durka was our boss, so that's why he is here. Um, and uh, what was this funding for? We were funded for creating curriculum at the bachelor level, and uh, there were some uh, extra money also for uh, building laboratories for students for uh, recording and analysis of biosignals. And uh, we have created also complete online scripts for students for the BC level. So uh, if there would be some more time, we could go to this address and have a look. Unfortunately, so far it is still only in Polish, so <laughs> maybe not very useful to the full community, but quite useful for our students. Um, and one of the nice things that, that was already found that, that uh, at that time was that uh, students had the opportunity to uh, participate in research and also to go to conference, conferences to meet uh, real-world uh, researchers. So not, not only here in our institution, but also... Uh, so, for example, this is, uh, these are some students from us at uh, Neuroinformatics Congress in Mon uh, Monachium, Munich. 
and uh, but some of them also published with us recently. So they started at that time and they are still working with us. Okay, so uh, what do we teach at the first cycle? Uh, we focus on uh, knowledge and skills necessary to record and analyze bioelectrical signals. So e mainly we are focusing on EEG, but also uh, learn. we teach them how to measure and analyze EMG, EOG, ECG. And uh, we teach physical basis of these signals, so they can understand how those signals arise in the uh, organism and how to record these signals and then how to process them and draw some uh, conclusions. So for this, we teach also statistical inference. And of course, we need to develop programming skills because most of these techniques, they, although we have already running toolboxes for this, but we try to, to make them understand what is beneath. So some of them, they have to code from, start, from the scratch. Um, also, we found out that it's uh, very useful to teach them some uh, machine uh, learning. And in fact, I must say that we see growing demand and pressure from students. They have, want to have more and more courses on machine learning. Uh, and uh, we uh, think that uh, the foundations should be also very strong on physics and mathematics. That is what our faculty can support the students very well. And um, how do we divide the, the time that they have uh, for different types of courses? So on the first level, as you can see, the majority is uh, probably physics and math. So this goes for first three uh, semesters is mainly uh, math and physics and programming. Uh, then we start joining some, as you see, bio things. So uh, we have cell biology and histology so that they can talk to people in other laboratories and they know how to look into the microscope. Uh, and there is also some courses or psychology, for example, because some of them will probably work in hospitals or maybe have contact with uh, patients. So. This is the, the things that uh, we uh, wanted to, to teach them. Um, of, the new, of the informatics stuff, uh, we have general uh, IT and especially programming, and we have chosen then at that time Python, and it turned out to be a good solution. Because uh, originally, we, at that time, most of the people in our uh, lab uh, were using MATLAB but we have found that there is a new tool that seems to be growing popular, and that is free. And that's why we have switched to Python, and right now it seems that it's, it was a very good decision. <laughs> uh, and of course, we have some courses on databases uh, as well. And from the, what I call special, so these are courses that I think are somehow special to neuroinformatics, this is statistics, signal processing, biosignal acquisition, and biomedical imaging and machine learning. This biosignal acquisition, in fact, is quite a big portion of real laboratories. So they, in fact, measure their, on themselves uh, those biosignals. So we work with human signals, not, not uh, on, on the cell level, but on the surface level. Um, and what I think is also valuable that they uh, learn how to process those signals that they have collected. So they can see how uh, what they did during the measurement influences how, how they have to fight with the, those signals later. Yes, so how to mark the, all the stuff that they have done, how to try not to make too many uh, uh, artifacts, and how to manage, manage also the, I think this works nice. Uh, and what can do students want to, uh, after these uh, studies? So after this first degree, most popular choice is just to continue on the second cycle. And uh, 
fortunately, it, it turned out that it also works quite nice uh, that uh, these two, that we have two cycles, so that after this first cycle, people can go, can choose the, the second cycle, not only here in uh, our university, but we found that there is quite a number of people that tries to find it somewhere else in Europe, for example, so they just move with the Erasmus programs or with some other programs to other universities. Um, wait a minute, okay. Uh, what do we teach at the second cycle? So our idea was that at the first cycle we have mainly focus on signal recording and analysis, and the second cycle goes for uh, mathematical modeling of neural processes. So uh, we teach uh, the uh, modeling in um, Neuron, in MATLAB, and general mathematical modeling, so with just equations and, uh, uh, for example, also uh, ana graphical analysis of, of, of quant and quantitative analysis of uh, uh, equations. There are also some uh, further developments on, uh, in physics, so like uh, courses on electrodynamics and quantum mechanics. And um, there is also a significant individualization on the, uh, at this level. So we take advantage of the fact that we have other faculties around. So quite often people take some courses at math or at informatics or, the, or at psychology. So that depends on the, your interest. Even some of them take courses at the Technical University of Warsaw because we have agreement that uh, the students can uh, migrate between the, uh, the universities. Okay, and the composition is uh, that we have uh, still some part of physics, but it is quite a lot of, of this can be self-selected, but we suggest strongly that they take electrodynamics. Uh, then there are some, again, self-selected biochem or psychology courses, and these are offered mainly at, the, uh, at their faculties here. Mm. And we have uh, these special uh, courses for neuroinformatics that we have this modeling in biology, modeling of neural uh, systems, further development of statistics, programming, and of course there are seminars where they can where we uh, ask different specialists of, on different topics, of, so they uh, just give talks on their own research, current research. And what uh, happens after these studies with our uh, alumni? So uh, I would say that it's more, it's more or less half and half. Half of them goes to uh, further research and they recruit for PhD programs, either here or, for example, at Nensky or in other uh, countries. And uh, the other half tries to find a work in commercial companies. And in particular, there are companies uh, that have R&D departments that use uh, signal analysis and require understanding of data science, programming, and skills of mathematical modeling. Mm. And re recently, to address the real world uh, demands, we started to think, and we will introduce this uh, next year. Uh, in fact, student group projects are already running, so these are uh, projects that require three to five students to form a group. Uh, they have... Uh, well, the, the tutor gives them a topic. In fact, it is, it is uh, the, the way that the tutors present some topics in advance, and then groups of students come to them and say, okay, we want to take this topic. And then the, the, the funny thing is that the tutor is not meant to help them to solve the problem uh, from the rhetorical side, but he should just try to... Uh, point them how to, to, to correct sources, but also uh, watches that they develop the, the soft skills. That means 
they should try to uh, structureize the problem, to uh, divide uh, the problem into who op takes which part, and then finally to come up with the uh, solution. And also there is, uh, I think, quite an important part that they have uh, partially self-assessment. So the final grade for, for the project is not what the tutor thinks, but it has some uh, weight also from the, what the people think that each person in the project uh, did. And the other uh, thing that we'll introduce next year is uh, something we called group programming because we found that uh, academic work tries to teach students one by one. So they do not inter... In fact, we uh, do not uh, well, promote cooperation between them. And in this case, we would like to promote the cooperation. That is, uh, this will be some a little bit bigger pro uh, programming uh, tasks that they have to uh, learn how to structure this project, how to uh, make... Uh, the, how to progress with the project, so how to watch how it develops and what, what are the issues, how to uh, co also use how to use version control and uh, I think quite important is uh, the part of code reviews so that they learn that they do not code only for themselves, they have to write such a code that a colleague can understand and uh, make use of this. And, um, okay, finally, I would like to tell that we have already graduated uh, 67 students on the bachelor level and uh, 35 uh, on the master level. And uh, that's mainly all. The, the last list that I have, this is the list of uh, places where the, our alumni are now those that I, ha I could find on uh, some LinkedIn contacts or in my contacts. Yeah, so that's, that's what they do right now. Okay, thank you very much for the attention.